Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Paranormal Portal. Oops, you know what I forgot to do? I have no idea. I forgot to oh, put you forgot a flat chat. Oh, I forgot that. Let me do this quick. Oops. Yeah, I knew I was forgetting something. I remembered to test it, but wow. I didn't remember to update it. Well, at least you know how to do it quickly. Yeah, I've got a little practice. That is, yeah, that's pretty big. Boom. Nice. Isn't that much better? Wow, look at that, yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Welcome to the new and improved oh, Paranormal that, Portal. Yeah, the, the like button explodes. Uh, yeah. That's it, awesome. I, now, ladies and gentlemen, just before I go any further, a special thank you to Mr. Wes Germer, who uh, he's like he's like having the best neighbor in the world, the kind that you go to bed and you wake up, your yard's mode, and he's got breakfast on your stove. <laughs> <laughs> and then the question becomes, how'd you get in my house? <laughs> <laughs> but you give him a key because he's such a nice guy. That's, that's Wes Germer, ladies and gentlemen. He made the lower third right down there, and it's just brilliant. And not only mine, but my good friend and co 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 conspirator, Mister yes. uh, Big Toe himself, Don Longbeard. How you doing? Look I don't, at. I don't know yet. Let's see here. Come there's on. yours. Well, you can For look sure. at my screen. Well, I, I, but I want to be surprised. Oh, okay. All right. <gasps> look Just, at that. Disco Don. Hey. And and nice. keep watching it. Keep watching it. Wait. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> There it oh, is, ladies awesome. and gentlemen. That's the awesome. The new lower thirds. Is that a little splooge on yours? What? That's a ghost, you <laughs> oh, weirdo. Oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? And the much larger chat window yeah, over next to Don's absolutely. head. Yeah, now I can actually see it. Yeah. So now we can see you guys, what you're saying. We have two locations where your posts are coming up, so... Uh, thank you all for being here. I just wanted to showcase this. I'm really excited about it. And special That's thanks awesome. again to yeah. Wes for making us look so damn good. Oh, look, at, look at how you did the paranormal portal across the top there. It's yeah, nice pops. I tell it, you, pops. it pops. It just pops. Yeah. Wow. I hope you guys like the new look. Let me know in the, in the comments yeah. if you're watching this after it's Ma live. Maggie says chat so big. Is that a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mods. You, you, <laughs> this is all on you mods. Just yep. saying. Yeah, keep clean. <laughs> Everybody can see it now. You gotta have kung fu grip on your mouse. That's Ooh. all I'm saying. Because uh, it could all just break off sideways here. <laughs> well, that's any day. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to be in the YouTube editor going, damn it, damn it. <laughs> like with the eraser. Damn yeah, it. Right. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> but anyway, welcome Goodness. to the Paranormal Portal. As always, we are uh, thrilled to be here. It's Friday night. You have made it through your week, and uh, you're at the weekend. Thank you, Maggie. She got it in. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Appreciate that a bunch. We yep. appreciate the the donations, and uh, we'll put that in the in the in the power fund. Keep the lights on here on the portal. It's not right. easy to run all this magic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> especially with the with the utilities <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, Jesus. exactly. So um, and my makeup artist, you know. Yeah, well, gotta that's. Pay that, gotta pay that. I don't know who bought you the disco light though. That's the <laughs> <laughs> disco dawn. I, I I would play Dancing Queen, but we'd get a strike. <laughs> but <laughs> Don's going full ABBA over there. But anyway, we have uh, always two full hours of fun ahead of us here tonight, and uh, we're not connected to the network. There was something wrong on the network. Ah, screw them. So we're gonna just do this YouTubey. We're doing it. We're doing it Wednesday style. We're going full YouTube here tonight, so we won't have commercial breaks unless we need one, unless which is always one. possible. But uh, I look good in purple. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> Deb thinks everything looks good in purple. <laughs> That's okay. I'll That's, take it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take it. But um, we got a bunch to go through as always, and I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I just really excited about the new look. I, I think know. this looks I mean, really awesome. nice. So yeah, uh, look, you can actually see how big my head really is. Oh, Yay, hey, Ethan! Ethan. Yay. There we go. There I beat him too. Awesomeness for the portal. All right, and more mischief for everybody. All right, and penicillin for Maggie and. Oh hey, uh, and <laughs> Don's Don's playing the Jolly Rogers, so yep. everything's possible. Yeah, because everything's jolly around Don. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the there's jolly, that. The Jolly Jelly Roll. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly elf, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't steal any pigs. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get after it. Uh, we got a lot to get through, as I was saying, and uh, no better place to start than... Danus. 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 Let's do Danus, ladies and gentlemen. Get with it. 
Actually, before we go to the news, let oh. me just do this and thank our Paranormal Portal sponsor. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And uh, that, of course, is Crypted Coin. If you're not familiar with Crypted Coin, it's a brand new cryptocurrency that is hitting the market. And uh, it has the cryptid research and investigation at its heart. And if you want to know more, go to cryptedcoin.io to get more information on how to get involved, to get invested if you want to do that. I'm not a financial advisor by any measure of the, of the word, but I'm really excited that they are our sponsor and uh, that somebody's finally launched a cryptocurrency that we can relate to. Yes, so sir. Uh, check it out, cryptidcoin.io. Special thank you to Cryptidcoin for sponsoring the Paranormal Portal. So thanks again, guys. And uh, it's back to you and me, Don. All right. And the, the news. news. All right, let's go to the <coughs> to the news desk. Are you okay over there? No. Are you smelling hungry? <laughs> what? Never mind. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's probably best. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have a drink though before I All choke. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. We're gonna do this. this is the news desk, studio. ladies and gentlemen. We got a bunch of uh, news to hit, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll leave here way more informed than when you got here. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> We're shooting for the best here. Not that uh, everything we give you is uh, newsworthy, but it's always interesting. <laughs> and uh, the first one on our roster of fun here tonight is from unexplained-mysteries.com. Brings us this uh, breathtaking news that uh, NASA is actually going to get involved in UFO research. What? <laughs> it's true, Don. Yeah, I think we've mentioned it before, but this is a little more, a little more in depth. I hope. I don't know. I, I think it's just another, another, uh, another government funding. Deal is all it is. But uh, let's see what it says. It's from Jan June 10th. So it's brand new news. It says the U.S. Space Agency has thrown its hat into the ring. Excuse me. With a new effort to investigate unidentified aerial phenomena. Why don't they just, you know, admit that there's stuff on the backside of the moon that we can't see that they've seen, that they've known about since 1969, and we go there. That would be great news. But but that's not the kind of news they're giving us, ah, unfortunately. Ah. They're giving us this kind, and did, that means did, they're going to spend. Did you say this kind? This kind. This kind. As this kind. disinformation kind. Well, they're going to they're going to seek more government funding, I'm sure, because oh, they no. have to investigate this did stuff now. Gosh. After scoffing at it for decades, ladies and gentlemen, NASA is going to throw their hat in the ring. It's an announcement yesterday, yeah. NASA. <laughs> excuse me. Hold NASA. On. NASA. NASA's throwing their hat. Uh, NASA revealed that it had launched a nine month study, which will focus on analyzing existing astronomical data for anomalies that cannot be scientifically explained. So question, it, is it going to take nine months to gestate? Oh, I'm sure and it'll then take every bit of that. we're going to have a baby at the end, like, like an like a alien hybrid? Is that what it is? You know, this all it means is that they're not going to do anything quick. They're going to take all their time with it and, <laughs> and seek funding. Labor pains all the way through it. Yeah, absolutely. So they are going to cry. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so sorry. in the, the details of anything, it does... It does find will be released to the public. Ah. Highly questionable. <laughs> uh, it is important to note, however, that the study, which is limited a budget of a hundred thousand dollars, really will only be laying the groundwork for a much larger larger investigation into UAPs into the future. <sighs> hundred grand for nine months? Are you serious? Right, oh a nine month investigation study. I'd work. I'd do that job. I'd go pour through their stuff for nine months and. Make a hundred grand. That's a win, right? Yeah, Don? but there's nothing there. What there's is all what kinds is, there? What does a hundred grand do anything anymore? Do you know I have the easiest job I've ever had in the world? It's the easiest job, less stress. I get paid the most, even more than the prison. When I was working at the prison, I didn't make this much money. And so I'm already halfway there. Oh. What okay. the hell is a hundred grand gonna do for anybody? Um, I, it would be fantastic for me. I'm just speaking. Well, speaking okay, for, but it's I a hundred grand I don't currently have. So if you actually <laughs> expect there to be answers by the end of the hundred grand, no, it's it's a it's oh a pitch for goodness. more funding is what it's going to be. Oh, uh, we, we would love to have gone through it. We just didn't have the funding. We only had a hundred grand. So the output from this particular study is not to sift through all the data and do this research. Exactly. It's about. It's to make a proposal for a research program that we can then implement Oops. based on the influence of principles that are there. Oops. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I didn't pre-read this for the record. I just knew 
This is a pitch for money. Said NASA's Thomas Zerpukin or Putin. <laughs> Zerpukin? Zerpukin? I knight you, Zerpukin. Zerpukin? I don't know how you say that. Uh, the study will be headed up by David Spurgle. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're batting a thousand today. These I, are not my name. I did not type this. This is not my fault. President of the Simmons Foundation, <laughs> David Spurgel. No offense, David Spurgel, if you happen to be out there hearing the sound of my voice. It's just an unusual name I've never heard before. Well, and, and Zerbukin. Zerbukin, too. Zerbukin, I've never heard either. So those are two names. Those might be aliens themselves. I'm just saying. Uh, there, there's a great deal of stigma associated with UAP among our naval aviators and aviation community. He said, one of the things we tan tangen tangentially, what the hell? Tangentially. tangentially. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a word. I, I believe it is. It's written there, but, uh, it's not one I'm familiar with. Uh, there's way too many syllables in that, uh, hope to do as part of this study simply by talk, talking about it in the open is to help to remove some of the stigma associated with it. And that will yield, obviously, increased access to data, more reports, and sightings. Okay, so basically what they just said is they're paying $100,000 for a talking head. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a government program. That's all there's, they said. <laughs> there's nothing efficient about anything. This is, <laughs> this Today is, in the news of UAPs from yeah. NASA, we've nothing. Just, we've decided, Thank you for the hundred grand. we have uh, had a 10-month committee to come up with the idea that we will now talk about UFOs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Mom. This is how the government works, folks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Lots of wonder and amazement in every uh, taxpayer's dollar. You know, dude, is that like, is that like a, you know, what do they call it, earmark pork? They call that pork in the budget? <laughs> pork? It's like, I, I just, could be. Just, I, I, I wouldn't call it pork, I, personally. I, as long as it smokes, it's good. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's much less valuable than pork. <laughs> um, so true. I was, yeah, I was going right. to be what, what, what pork becomes after I've done with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> did you hear that mom? He's being gross. <laughs> uh, it was more of an inference than an actual disgusting joke. You have to think about it. Um, and then maybe not long though, but <laughs> our, our 10 year old friend would figure that one out. <laughs> Jake. Yeah. Jake's going, Oh man, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> I'm not to be, I'm not, I'm not a role model. This is not marked as a child's show. <laughs> do not, so, do, so not do not role model. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. This is unexplained-mysteries.com. Did I interrupt you? Sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to flush the toilet before it got any worse. <laughs> so. I let it. I allowed it. All right, I'll, very good. I'll allow it. Very good. <laughs> Belief in Roswell UFO crash remains strong 75 years on. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. I think so because you don't dispatch a platoon of people to go find a weather balloon. Nope. You don't do that. And nope. that's what they did. And uh, so much more. Again, we had a great show with Donald Raymond Schmidt who came on the Paranormal Portal. And he's one of the premier investigators of the Roswell uh, incident. Right. Has written several books on the topic and uh, continues to do research in that area looking for uh, potential debris and other things that might have been overlooked at the time. But some of the stories he told were absolutely... Oh, yeah. They were they were literally terrifying that, that there was such, oh, that was a, awesome. such a government overreach that, went hap that happened during the Roswell investigation. Right. And a whole community was essentially terrorized by the Air Force. Yeah. I mean, nothing short of that. It was like it was like the Gestapo moved in. It was just terrifying. If you want to catch that episode, check out our archives in the UFO playlist. You just got to find <clears> it somewhere. No, it's in the UFO There's, playlist. It'll actually, be, actually, it should be one of the the, the uh, ones you pinned. One, of, yeah, one of the one of the more popular yeah. ones. Well, it used to be one of them that I pinned, but oh. um, it's not currently. But let's see what this says. Uh, the recent poll has demonstrated that many people in the U.S. still believe. That aliens crashed at Roswell in 1947. I agree. There are a few events in UFO lore as hotly debated as the Roswell incident, an event that has been covered in countless books, documentaries, TV shows, and movies over the last few decades. Yep. Exactly what was found scattered across the ranch approximately 30 miles north of Roswell in 1947 continues to remain a controversial topic. With some believing that it was a crashed alien spacecraft, with sub, uh, some subscribing to the official weather balloon story. Yeah, they've been drinking the Kool-Aid. And uh, others believing that it is some sort of secretive government project 
that went awry and had to be covered up. Even though it's been almost 75 years now, there is a surprising number of people in America who still believe that something extraterrestrial came down that day. <laughs> Show of hands, me. Eric, uh, Eric, the AKA Purple Hobbit says, of course, aliens crashed. How do you think Don got here? <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Up. We don't want him to know. No. He thinks he's a person. <laughs> not, not only that, they'll operate and pick and probe and. <laughs> Be the best night of your life. Bop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Sounds like a good night. <laughs> Sounds like a date. Woo! According to a recent Far- Farley Dickinson Where's University my poll. Bacon <laughs> God, I wish I had a sound bite of that. God, you oh, I wish I could I wish I could separate that. That would be brilliant. Where's my bacon grease? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, the poll, 34% of Americans from across the political spectrum believe that it was a crashed alien spacecraft, while 12% were less certain but still deem such a possibility very likely. 28%, by contrast, thought it was, that such an explanation was very unlikely. Uh, Roswell has become part of our national folklore, said poll director Dan Casino. Nice name. I can pronounce that one. There is not a fringe belief. This is not a fringe belief. If you ask your friends and neighbors, you're going to find people who think it's true. Show of hands, me, Don. Yeah. We think it's true. Yeah. I I, I really do. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, really, because there's just too much. There was just too much that happened right around that time and just odd things. And then, and then less than what? Less than five years later, Valiant Thor shows up. Oh, right, right. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, hmm, how does this work? Well, the spaceship didn't work anymore. It had to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. had to fern harm, fern harm, little fern harm. You know, E.T. was a Jedi, right? I think we talked about that last show. <laughs> I think we went over your logic on that. Um, well, you know, hey. Hey, I know he's in the Imperial Senate or the yep. uh, whatever. Um, let's go to the next one in the newscast. And this is, uh, from unexplained-mysteries.com as well. Great site, folks. Definitely go over there, stop over there, support what they're doing. Unexplained-mysteries.com. You'll, you'll love it. If you're into the paranormal, the 40 and the, the supernatural and the bizarre, along with regular news items too. But, uh, I, I, obviously there's a reason I go there because it's a perfect home for news of the paranormal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on. Here we go. Unexplained-mysteries.com oh, brings geez. us. Oh, jeez. Wes, give it up. He <laughs> says, now I see a million mistakes on the lower thirds. I'll fix them and send them back over, Brent. You know what? Brent, they're awesome. Ah, Gosh, Wes. you know, come on. Wes, come on. I mean, you, you like, just put lipstick on a couple of pigs here. Come oh, on. <laughs> <laughs> Pearls before swine. I mean, you, you, gotta, you, you, you don't have to raise the bar so damn high. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We, we can only get over once so we can throw a leg over. We're not pole vaulters here. <laughs> Jesus, God forbid we fall down and roll under the fence. I know. We're like crawling to the finish line, and, and he's like a Nigerian sprinter. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> just gone. Um, sorry. I mean, that was just because they are so fast in the Olympics. All right. Let's go to this one. This is unexplained mysteries. Dot com. <laughs> ministries? Huh? <laughs> Did you say unexplained ministries? Mis- I might have been. I might have. <laughs> Mysteries.com. Ooh, Astronomer sorry. discovers strange <laughs> slow ro- rotating neutron star. Right. So there's that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this really means, if it's anything important or not, but it's slowly rotating. I thought, well, maybe that's unusual. Maybe. Let's it, talk about yeah, it. Let's find out. <clears throat> Excuse me. A neutron star with an anomalously slow rotational speed has been discovered in a stellar graveyard. Oh, okay. Wow. It, uh, it's rolling over in its grave. <laughs> yeah, slowly. <laughs> discovered by an international team of astronomers, the enigmatic star was spotted using the Meerkat radio telescope in South Africa. It is a particularly unusual find, not only because of its slow rotational speed, but also because it was found within a neutron star graveyard from which there should be no radio signals at all so it's maybe it's in hospice <laughs> thank you it's, we call uh, it, we call it florida yeah. <laughs> it's like a nursing home for there's, dying there's stars a, there's only two kinds of people in florida <laughs> there's older people and rednecks That's unless all. you're a listener of the show then you're wonderful <laughs> then you're absolutely awesome <clears throat> neutron stars are an extremely dense remnants of supernova nova explosions and typically rotate tens of thousands of times per minute 
One possibility is that this newly discovered object could be a, a new theoretical class of ultra-long period magnetar. However, further work will be needed to confirm whether or not this is indeed the case. Amazingly, we only detect radio emissions from the surface for about 0.5% of its rotation period, said study leader Dr. Manisha Caleb of the University of Sydney. It's an SOS. Maybe, huh? Uh, this means that it's very fortuitous that the radio beam intersected with the Earth. It is therefore likely that there are more of these very slowly spinning sources in the galaxy, which, which has important implications for how neutron stars are born and age. Wow. Well, there you it's, go. What if it's a, 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 an SOS saying, you know, save our, save our, you know, we blew ourselves up, <laughs> you know, like they did on Mars and. They want to send, you know, they want to see the new planets. It could be. I don't know. That's just, they found it. I don't know what the hell it means. It's probably going to, it's it's dead. It's just, it's it's in the neutron star graveyard, (laughs) whatever that means. It's like, there's not like elephants. They take them and put them in the graveyard. Yeah. There's like tusks (laughs) laying everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe. Let's let's go get him. All right. This one is, uh, watches. They don't leave their dead behind either. This one is a video one. And it's a good thing that we're only on, uh, on YouTube tonight because, this video, I have seen it. It's kind of creepy if it's not an edit. It, it very well could be an edit, and uh, we just don't know. But on face value, if it's, if it's legit, it's really creepy. Uh, and this is a video of a ghost creeps into baby's cot in a weird video clip. Uh, unnerving footage of something moving next to a sleeping baby has been, been generating interest on TikTok. Uh, the clip, which shows a couple lying in bed next to their baby's cot, begins innocently enough, with everyone seemingly getting a good night's sleep. After a few seconds, however, the mattress in the baby's cot starts to undulate up and down as though someone or something is pushing it up from underneath. Wow. Then, after a few more seconds, some fingers appear on the left side of the frame. Uh, but according to the couple and the video, nobody else was in the room at the time. But is everything as it seems? While the footage has been hailed as evidence of the paranormal, it is quite possible that the close-up video of the baby's cot was actually recorded at a different time, meaning that the guest, the ghost could simply be one of the parents pulling a prank. Whatever the case, however, it's certainly a creepy clip. Hmm. And since we like us some creepy clips... Let's put it to let's public put, debate. All right, now I will say this is the image. This is again from TikTok. Um... Uh, I don't know who the user is or who to attribute it to. I guess it's Ren Mayan is the one that's Ren Mayum is the one uh, posting this. So we'll go with that. But this is a split screen. The bottom part it shows the room. The, the, the top shows the close-up of the baby in the crib. Now, I will say on the version that I watched, if it's the same version, you can actually see what looks like a shadow figure coming from the door into the room. Oh, no good. And then you do actually see the 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 crib mattress like get funky uh, on the on this on this lower part too. Yeah, so let's check it out and All see right, what you guys see what think. Got. Okay. What you're looking at is over here. See that the crib mattress goes up a little bit? There it goes down a little bit. All right, uh, nothing yet. Oh, the lower third's in the way. Is it? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, there shouldn't be. Hold on, because it's not. What? Yeah, it is. Yeah, look. All right, I'm going to pull it up. Hold on. Oh, oh. Well, I can do this. Scroll it up a little higher. I mean, it's it's a small image, right. but let's go. Let's continue. There's the hand here. I don't know. This doesn't look like the same one that I saw. I mean, it's disappeared when Dad r- wakes up to strange noises. Okay, so let's watch that again. Yeah, let's watch it again, because I... This is the weird part. Now, on the, f- on the original one... It was like you could see something up here. The one that I watched, which is, uh, I think, a little longer version than this one. Yeah, because I think, I think if you back it up, I think I saw something just as you had started. I don't see where to back it up, though. It's oh, not giving me any option. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a TikTok. It's a TikTok yeah. So 
I don't have any control. But what you will see is like some fingers appear up here. <clears throat> and the version I saw it was a, the bottom part was oh, bigger. Yeah, yeah there's, oh, there's yeah. some fingers. Just a couple of them too. That's yeah. what's also creepy. So I don't know, legit or not, I don't know. So Dad gets up to look. He hears a noise. He's kind of like turning over, and then I think he just finally, well, he just looked. Whatever. I'm gonna have to find that. Yeah, see if you can find a better version of it. That yeah, wasn't the best. Give me some of those. Give me some of those hashtags on there. Um, Hashtag. What is it? Ha right there. Oh. Hashtag ghost. Ghost. Haunted paranormal poltergeist. Um, yeah. Haunted. So yeah, check it out. Um, but at any rate, it's strange. It's very strange. But is it real? You be the judge. I don't know. It's most likely an edit of some kind, and we'll just go with that. But we're going to continue on with the news here because I got a couple more to go, and then we're done. But <clears throat> now we're in the now we're in the wayback machine on the archives here. And this archive comes from 2013 from unexplained-mysteries.com. Man blames aliens for losing his car. <laughs> what? You what? heard it right. June 9th, 2013, police in Ohio have reported an incident in which a man lost his car following an encounter with the aliens. The peculiar series of events started when the 28-year-old called the cops to report that he'd been having problems with this car and didn't know where he'd left it. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. Yeah. Uh, according to the man, subjects not of this world had instructed him to drive to a field on the basis that an airport mo would materialize and there and that he would then be picked up by aliens. It is believed the man had reported similar incidents before and that he had walked several miles before calling for assistance, as evidenced by blisters on his feet. While the man has since been returned home safely, the current <laughs> whereabouts of his car remains something of a mystery. Yep, there you go, folks. That's... Uh, that's you know if the aliens tell you to go somewhere don't listen don't don't listen tell yes. them to come pick you up yeah <laughs> sorry yeah i'm gonna have to have that spaceship please yeah i'm gonna need to be picked up can you can you uber me yeah <laughs> give me an uber all right let's go to this one and here's the last on our newscast tonight and this is for don I pulled this up for Don oh, from unexplained-mysteries.com. Is oh, bacon the secret to long life? Well, I tell you what, it smells good in your beard. <laughs> All right. Uh, a daily rasher, whatever that is, of bacon might yep. not seem very healthy, yep. but 105-year-old Pearl Cantrell swears by it. Egad, the, the centenarian, uh, has raised seven children during her lifetime and recently celebrated her 105th birthday. Wow. Oof. Uh, but it isn't a uh, but it isn't a healthy diet, exercise or medication that she attributed to her longevity. I love bacon. I eat it every day. She says, "I don't feel as old as I am." That's all I can say. <laughs> God bless her. That's awesome. Bacon is a food that has come under considerable scrutiny in recent years, both because of its popularity and because scientists can't seem to decide on whether it is beneficial <laughs> or detrimental to eat it's, on a regular basis. It's the duct tape of food. It must be. Uh, in two recent studies, a portion of processed meat, such as bacon, every day has the potential to increase the risk of death by as much as 20%. Sign me up. I'm, then I'm doomed. Uh, a very small helping every day, however, of less than 20 grams was linked to a 3% risk reduction. What's the secret to an extra long life for one centenarian? It just might be bacon. There you go. Um, so it might keep you alive, folks. It might not, but but it might. I, I think it's a genetic thing, honestly. Don't you? Like, yeah, I, I actually do too. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. This thing's yeah. This actual. This it's actually um, five minutes long. Is it the full video? Yeah, yeah we can't watch that. But <clears throat> yes, we can. No, we really can't. <laughs> It's, it's, it's interesting. I think the one I watched was maybe 30 seconds or 30, you know, just a little bit longer than the one that we saw. So very interesting. I don't know why I had that notification. Okay. All right. But that's going to conclude the news for tonight, folks. So I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you ready to get back to the regular program, Don? I don't know. I'm still watching that TikTok. All right. Well, you get yeah. back to me. <laughs> There 
you have it, folks. The news in our new and improved look. Look at that new and improved look. Mm. Gives me a warm feeling. Ah, there is you. something in that upper corner, but it only comes up one time. And it's right at the beginning. Right. And then, yeah. You could kind of see a clip, of, like a, a smidgen of it in that video that we showed, but. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, now, is it is it fakeable? Sure, it's really fakeable. It's easy to make fake videos like that because you just you just need a sleeping baby and uh, and two cameras. And uh, you freaked out, you get. And you 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 play like you're sleeping in your bed, and and the other person just goes under the crib and screws around, uh, you know, poking their fingers up. Right. Is, is that a, a indication of paranormal? Well, not in and of itself, but it could be. So, you be the judge. That's all I'm going to say. But I can tell you what, Don. What what can you tell me there, Brad? It could be paranormal. Wow. That's what I can tell you. How about for non-committal is that, huh? Yep. <laughs> I got a, a message from a guy named Eric. Paranormal Portal, come out to play. Uh, <laughs> they're referencing my shirt. Warrior. No, the Warriors, yeah? Yeah, that's what this shirt. The shirt oh, is. Uh, yeah. Um, it's the Baseball Furies. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that one. I haven't seen that movie like forever. God, I watched that. I've watched that movie so many times. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it. I the Warriors. Yeah, oh, the bottles yeah. on his fingers. Clink, clink, clink. That's the one. All right. All right, what are we doing? I had to swallow there for a second. I had to swallow. All right, we got. Uh, there, I just shared it to your IM if you want to show okay. that one. It'd be without the clips out, clip outs, too. So. Okay. Um,. Here we have this article from Quora that we've been going through for a while now. No, actually, just last show. We haven't been going through it for too long. But these are um, people that are, are responding to a question, have you ever seen a supernatural entity? And Quora has aggregated these from Reddit, very similar to a lot of the other uh, long-form articles that we've done. But let's take a look at the continuation of these people's accounts of seeing a supernatural entity. Are you ready, Don? Let's see if we can see a supernatural entity. <laughs> well, let's see if they've seen one. Yeah, so okay. Let's see if they've seen. Is that right? Saw. Saw. If they've seen one. If they had yeah, seen. Yeah, if they've seen one. If they had seen. Yeah, okay. Sorry, grammar. Oh, no, Eric, grammar. no. Now, yeah. if they did a sequel to The Warriors, it'd have to be in a nursing home. Oh. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> can you? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> Dig it. He's got the bottles on his fingertip. It's it's catheters. All right. Here's the next one. It's by Ganilla Hart Hartgers. Nice. Sounds pretty Swedish. It says he knows Swedish, so that's, that makes sense. And uh, this is in response to the question, have you ever seen a supernatural entity? Yes, I have. It happened about six months ago in May of 2018. I was in a meeting at work in a conference room with glass walls. I hope I didn't read this one already. I might have. Sounds familiar. Yeah, this one I've read. Let's go to the next one. This is by Mandy. Uh, Mandy is, uh, again, answering the same question. Yes, I was in Odum, Odumwa. Otumwa, um, what is that? La? O Otumwa La? Staying, staying what used to be a tuberculosis hospital. Mm. We stayed in the nun quarters, so I went downstairs at 2 a.m., and I started feeling like somebody was watching me. Ah. As I was making my food, it got more intense, so when I was done, I started to walk, and, wa and for a, an instant, I felt a light touch on my shoulder and started running up the stairs. The feeling went away as I got to the top of the stairs, and later the next day, I was telling the girls, and they told me a story about a nun's ghost that always walks the building at, you guessed it, 2 a.m. every night. You know, it's interesting, but one of my, one of my, one of my new bosses, I should say, mm -hmm. um, was telling me a story. They were in down in Frederick, Frederick, Fredericksburg. Uh -huh. um, at an antique store that was in like a, an old Vic, uh, old uh, Gothic Victorian, you know, down there. Uh -huh. You know, the way they are. Anyhow, it was, and he was telling me that um, he, him and his wife and his brother and, and sister-in-law were going to this uh, antique store that was in this uh, uh, old Victorian-style, you know, Gothic-style house. 
Uh-huh. You know, uh, what, what's it, an, antebellum? An antebellum. Oh, sure. Antebellum. That's probably better. But anyhow, uh, he walked up to the door and he the, the door was locked and he could see in. He could see the lady, you know, the, 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 the lady that runs the place sitting, you know, just across the way. And he's trying to open the door and, you know, he does the, you know, and the lady looks up and does the thing and she goes, <laughs> come on in, you know. This uh-huh. is what he says. And then he says, you know. And so she gets up, she comes over and, Door opens right up, you know, no big deal. Oh. So anyhow, he says he's walking through, and he goes, and you know, in those old, those old antebellum houses, you know, they've got the, the grand um, balcony. Mm-hmm. You know, you go up the stairs to the grand sure. balcony. Yep. He says he was getting ready to go up those stairs, and as he went up those stairs, he felt this pressure on his chest, like this this pressure, uh-huh. you know, and and he said it was like, it was like, you know, about this, you know. Yeah. So anyhow. He's like, he says, he gets up there and he's going up the stairs and let me see if I can get this right. Um, and he gets up to the top of the stairs and he just has this feeling of panic, like, holy crap, I have to get out of here. Ooh. And he turns around and he goes back down the stairs. And as he goes down the stairs, he passes his wife and says, I have to go. I have to get outside. Come, come, you do your thing. I'm going to be outside. Uh-huh. So he goes outside and he's. You know, he's breathing, he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, walking around the house or, you know, walking around. Sure. And then he goes to walk around the house and he gets to the back, the back area where that window of the room that he was closest to. Sure. Um, on the top. He said as he got close to that area behind the house, he started having that pressure again. Oh. And he walked away. So he turned back around, walked back around. He said just a little bit later, his wife comes zooming out the door. I'm out of here. <laughs> Right. She said that when she was walking up the stairs, uh, when he came down the stairs, he thought his why his sister-in-law had come up because she was wearing a black, like a black overcoat or something like that. You know? Okay. Um, but his wife described somebody in a black overcoat, but they, her sister-in-law was like oh, way over there. Oh, wow. And when she was coming up the stairs, she passed it. Or maybe it was he that passed it. But anyhow, they both had a very similar experience. He said it was just crazy. It was just like this pressure and this panic feeling of, I got to get the hell out of here. Right. So, <clears throat> I, think they can, I think they can do that. I mean, I think they can they can st- stimulate fear in people. Right, um, right. Much maybe the same sure. way that uh, like some cryptids do. Maybe it's a similar trait. But, uh, I, you know, I mean... I guess when you get those feelings, if it feels like you should leave, you should probably should leave. You know, I don't think yeah. it's, it behooves yeah, you to stick luck. around. Yeah, just yeah. don't push the luck. You know? Don't push your luck. Absolutely. All right, so let's go to the next one here. And this is from Lisa Pros- Prospectiba. Prospectiba. Uh, former youth worker, business manager, teacher, career author. Uh, let's see. It says not seen, but felt somebody pulling on my hand so strongly that I woke up and had to walk around the house, uh, for about (coughs) four hours to calm down. Wow. My house was much loved by the previous owner who had inherited from his parents. That parent, Mary was known and loved by all the neighbors. When I bought the rundown terrace, it had, I'd been looking for each for a year, each weekend searching for the right house at the right price. The market was competitive, so I'd missed out on other houses at auction. One day, a work colleague had to drop something off on the way back to our office, and while waiting in the car, I saw a house opposite for sale and the realtor at the door. I don't know what compelled me to run and ask for a look at the house, but I did. Running quickly through each room and then grabbing the realtor's card, when I got back to the car, I told my colleague, I'm going to buy that house. Not at all like cautious, uh, logical me, but I'd fallen in love at first sight, and within a week I'd bought it, and two months later I moved in. While unpacking, I found a hidey hole under the floorboards. Inside was a large bouquet of dead flowers Ah. and the remains of burned incense sticks, and it occurred to me that Mary had died in the house, but this didn't bother me as my home uh, has a good feeling, and I didn't believe in ghosts. So when I fell asleep in my chair and was woken up by someone pulling on my fingers. I was surprisingly unafraid. I still am. If there is a cheeky ghost in my home, it's a benign one. Well, there you go. I think that's true too. I mean, there's certainly benign presences all over the place and, uh, you know, not every haunting 
is is horrible. Not everyone is. That most of them, I think, are are very very much benign and and right. sure. And they're just there. They're just there as part of their process. Maybe they love the place, don't want to leave. Maybe they uh, want to look after it for longer. Yeah. Who knows? But or maybe they're just you know approve. They just approve of who. Right. Who is, uh, you know, to take that's a good point. House. That's a good point yeah. because so many there's so many times people will live in a house, have no problems, then right. suddenly another people will move into the house and have nothing but problems. Right. It's like the house doesn't like them. And and is that possible? I don't know. I think I think there is a sentience to all things. And if right. it's not the house itself, it's something that's there as a spiritual entity and says, No, 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 no. Get the hell out and uh may make living there difficult so well, you know but you know uh, yeah yeah i mean um i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> oh so okay. so um some people talk about how how if a house is abandoned or left um unattended mm-hmm. un unlived in right that it begins to kind of die it could, becomes run down and mm-hmm. things go wrong with it and it becomes the spooky house on the block sure you know uh-huh. So we talk about how, you know, cars too. I mean, if cars are neglected, if you've got a car that you only drive like once every now and then, yeah. you know, like I do, you know, I got a, the pickup doesn't, eh, I'm not driving as much as I used to, mm-hmm. but I still go out and, you know, it's fired up, you know, and you use it to, to haul garbage and stuff like that. So, but some of us, uh, when we were growing up, we talked about like if the house had a soul mm-hmm. because the soul right. is, so they're complaining that they can't hear me. Uh huh. So, hmm, Speak up. <clears throat> they that the house has a soul of its own, you know, and so if it's like I said, if it's left by itself, if it's unattended, it's left neglected, that it starts to die and break down. But and so if somebody runs goes in there and takes over a home like that, and they do it justice, you know, they they clean it up, they paint the walls, they get rid of you know. You know, they clean. You know, I can imagine that if it's haunted, mm-hmm. that it would be a benign haunting. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, but on the other hand, though, it could be a, a pissed off poltergeist because yeah. it it feels like it was been neglected. You know, so just different, you know, um, points of view. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's that's valid. I think of a house is loved and it's full of you know had a good experience with lots of loving people in it and uh you know friendly happy people then it's going to be a good house for other people i think but uh then there's the other houses where people are horrible in them and i think that i think that we do imprint on our surroundings i really do i think that we 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 as energetic beings ourselves we we think that all of the stuff that happens within us stays within us but it doesn't it radiates out it radiates out into our environments and uh I think it imprints, right? And yeah. that's how you get residual hauntings and things like that. So, um, yeah, I have no doubt that that's the case. Now, does the house have a heart? I think so. I think all houses have a heart of some kind. But I think the house's heart is the people who live in it. Possibly. And therefore, sure. when they leave, you know, the house starts to die. You know, Maybe. Thusly. Um, and if somebody returns and shows love to it, it gives the the pulse back to the house. That's yeah, that that makes sense as well. Yeah, for sure. That could certainly be. But <laughs> that's so pretty. It so is. Beautiful. It's it's kind of a beautiful thought, really. Yeah. I that think I think so. Yep. Um all right. Very cool. Yeah, Don's Don's faders just about pinned to the top, so there's not much more I can give him over here. Do you but, hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you get close to it, it's amazing how that works. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Stone tape theory. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. stone tape theory. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. The imprinting is, yeah, that's the idea in parapsychology. Yes, yes. All right, let's go to the next one in our list of fun here. And this is by Cindy Roday. <clears throat> says, Yes, many times I'm a channeler and I'm often asked by clients to connect to connect the client to their deceased friends, relatives, angels, or guides. Sometimes we get more than we bargain for. I've seen portals open like in the Marvel movie Days of the Future Past where, where Blink opens the portals with deceased Native Americans inside the openings, answering questions and gesturing, 
And I've seen people alive with invisible chains attached to them by spirit people in the underworld. Mm. <clears throat> That's horrible. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a small leprechaun entity walk past me with a snub look on his face. <laughs> That'd be awesome to be able to see stuff like that. I've seen angels, fairies, witches. Uh, and I don't like that word. You know, I, witches are not the same thing. Uh, I mean, witches is a, is a is a spirituality. It's not a a creature. Right. Um, they're thinking like crones, maybe, but. Uh, souls of various sizes, shapes, and genders, and, and dress. And I've seen a childlike Casper, the ghost, when I was clearing someone's home. These are a few examples of what I've witnessed, and I will say that I do not choose to channel from the depths uh, negativity, evil, or darkness. Yeah, no doubt. I channel from the light only, and I believe this is the reason the majority of my experiences have been positive. You attract what you put out, and what you seek, you will f you find you will find, be crystal clear on what it is you wish to see, experience, and expose yourself to, bless you, always. And uh, that's, she even put a hashtag in there, so. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's see, um, Eric says, uh, oh, it, uh, Eric says, uh, if I were a house, I'd be a cabin in the woods. <laughs> that's not creepy. That's not at all creepy at Breaks all. right up there with the house on the hill. It does, but we got a call. We this got a is call. from from a caller. a caller. We got a call from a caller. Gosh. Let's just see what the heck's going on here. And this is let's, uh, let's give the caller a holler. Give the caller a holler. Here we go. And this is area code nine nine what nine one six. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, how's it going, Brent? Hey this is David Bard. How you doing, David? Good to hear from you, brother. Thanks for calling in. You too, man. Hey Don, how you doing, buddy? Doing well, bud. Doing well. What's on your mind hey, tonight? Hey, Don, I just want to say, Don, real quick, that uh, I, I, I messaged you this, that I would never see Billy, uh, uh, Belly Butt and Lint the same again. <laughs> right. it, it, goes the same. <laughs> right. it goes the same for uh, the dryer lint. <laughs> oh. <Right. laughs> well, there you go. I'm glad to have messed you up for life on those two things. <laughs> what did you do? You did. I, I see Amber turd everywhere. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. I just want I wanted to call in and finally. I've been trying for a while. Um, and uh, to say I, I wanted to give you an experience that, that I had recently. Yeah, please. Um, I, I called in like a couple of years ago, and I told you about one in Carmichael, California, where I saw a, a full-bodied apparition walk down the hallway. And we went to investigate. There was nobody there, and it was crazy. But anyway, mm -hmm. this one happened recently in the house here in New York. Ooh, okay. And uh, – and we have those, it's called like a ring. I think it's called a ring. It's a camera. Yeah, the doorbell. It, ring. Yeah, ring cams. Yeah. Yep. Hey, yeah. And it lets you know when someone's on your porch. And, uh, well, it went off. Okay. And it like two in the morning or so. I don't know what exactly the time it was. But it was definitely in the a.m. And uh, so we're looking at it, and there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. And then all of a sudden we see something move away, like a light source was there the whole time, but we didn't know it was a light source. Oh, okay. It was there. It was there the whole time. And then after enough time, we see it just dart off of the porch. <laughs> um, I still have that footage. I'd be happy to send it to you. Please do. Yeah. I'd um, love, to, love to check that out. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. It's pretty freaky stuff. Um, but I, you know, I just wanted to call in and just give a quick little story. I, I do also want to say, Brent, um, it's so cool transferring music with you. I, I enjoy it. And uh, I got some more stuff to send to you. Outstanding, brother. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. It's It's been a lot of fun to hear what you're doing and uh, to hear what you're up to. And, and besides, you, you're a fellow brother of the Floyd. So Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we, a, yes, we are. Yes, yes we, we are. are. It's, we, yeah, brother. One it's, of the greatest bands. Yes, by all means, the greatest. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 I have to say the greatest, but I was trying to be safe with one of the greatest, but it is the greatest, you know, I think. Well, fa fantastic. Very good. It's all great right. to hear from you, man. Hey, Thanks hey, for Jamie. calling in. Yep. Talking to you guys. All right. All right. We'll see you, brother. Have a good one, bud. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Craziness. You know, those, those ring cams, they pick up so many things, and yeah. just you don't expect them. You know, um, no, they, they, we've, we featured a lot of videos and, yeah. and now I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say about some of them that they could be 
just uh, you know first generation ones. They don't have the camera refresh rate, so they can create right. ghostly figures sometimes, and maybe they're not ghostly. They're just people walking, but um, the the camera refresh late rate is so slow that it makes the the image look more trans, trans uh, more go more ghostly. Ghostly. <laughs> I was thinking of a bigger word, but that's <laughs> I ended up with ghostly. <laughs> so, but um, trans- yeah, All right, a definitely. translucent was what I was going for. That's where I ended up. With. There you go. But there you um, go. yeah, I think I think those. You know, the, the more cameras that are up, the more of this weirdness we're going to catch. Right. But also, the more cameras that are up, the more people are going to try to you know pull shenanigans too. So. That's the other side of it, and and I wish that wasn't the case because it would be really neat to know that every video you watch was an actual paranormal event. But you gotta you gotta look at them, and you've gotta start picking them apart and right. looking for the inconsistencies. Right. You gotta do every one of them like an investigator because, and, and you know, I never make any representations on the show other than my own uh, experiences. I can't know for sure something is paranormal or not. I just bring you what we what we determine is you know at least as supposed to be a real experience or a real video and sometimes we did debunk it right right live on the show oops sorry Ras. yeah <laughs> sorry wes <laughs> what what did i miss no wes the oh. the other last show oh <laughs> the, the the cave video oh yeah 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 I like the cave video that was a great example though i mean but that's the fun part of it it's kind of looking at this stuff and picking it apart and seeing yeah. If it, if it doesn't hold up to scrutiny, cool. At least we took a look at it and we got a chance to review it, and that's the good part. But, you know, the more cameras that are out there, the more this stuff's going to come in and there's going to be more gems out there. Right. And, and I think the same is true for those, those, uh, those driving cameras. Right. Those are going to be the big thing for Bigfoot. I just know it. They're going to start popping up. Well, you know, they've, 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 there's been many, many drive cams that have picked up many, many different things. Yeah. And they just there's just... It just creates more questions. Well, there is that, but <sighs> I'll tell you the quality of the cameras is getting better and better. So, like, true. a lot of the drive camera videos I've seen were real low, real low resolution. Right, right. And it's really hard to make it. I mean, it could be a booger flick by the camera for all you know. It's <laughs> like, is that really out there? Or was it much closer? But now, as the resolution is coming up, right, and the you know the refresh rates are are really cranking, right. we're gonna get better, a lot better stuff. So yeah, well, and and suspicious silence says trail cams too. Yeah, yeah, because. You're, the trail cams are getting better with the <clears throat> light spectrums, and so you know maybe the, you know the foots aren't finding, aren't seeing the infrareds and the night cameras, the night uh, you know. Uh, yeah, if they're able to yeah. pick up the yeah. ambient light, yeah. yeah, like the starlight cameras and stuff. As exactly, they, yeah, are there are, there must be trail cams that use those now, right? There, there must be because there's home security systems that do. Yeah, they're yeah. spendy, they are spendy. That's true, but. I, you know, there's the, the belief that Bigfoot can see that stuff. So right. it's how are you going to get a picture of something they know is there. Right. So I don't know. But as the starlight cameras come out, they just use ambient light and can generate a picture that looks like it's in daylight. Right. That's exciting. That's exciting stuff for me. All right. Let's continue on. And uh, thanks for calling in, David. That was yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. I look forward to seeing that video. And of course, I'll be happy to, to share it with the audience as well when it comes in. Not tonight on the show, folks. So don't don't hold your breath. Uh, even if he sent it right now, I wouldn't be able to put it up on the show. I have to prep. There is a there is a bit of prep that goes with every show, <laughs> a lot actually. But uh, anyway, sometimes uh, you know we we land on our feet and we've got a mess. But uh, can you believe it's eight o'clock already? No, really. Yeah, it's eight o'clock already. Wow, eight o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Did you need a break or anything? No, no. Okay. I was just I All was right. looking to see what time it was because I was like, oh, I can't be. Yeah, you know, I'd be eight, you know, seven thirty-five, seven four. No, it's only it's, wow. We're going for an hour already. <laughs> uh, if you take a four K video of something three hundred yards away, it's still going to look bad unless you have an optical zoom instead of a digital zoom. Yeah, there's that. I mean, that. but well, the the aperture in the camera, depending on the on the ability to, what kind of resolution it can capture, you can you can digital zoom with some with some um, reasonable uh, certainty that you'll be able to see features that you may not be able to make out. You know, obviously, optical zoom is the best because <clears throat> then you can digitally zoom in after the optical zoom and get really, really close. Mm, yeah. But uh, digital zoom in and of itself, oh, look at it's that did something. His face. He's got a zip on his face. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason we don't use 4K. Exactly. My <laughs> God. Oh, God. We look like crackheads. Oh, my God. <laughs> What? <laughs> you know, a lot of uh, actresses when they started coming out and started using 4K digital. Oh gosh, for yeah. filming movies and yeah. stuff, they're like, you know, 
I just don't like them. They make me just look so bad. It just, I'm just, and the makeup artist is like, I'm trying to do everything. I yeah, can. they got the spackle. You're just naturally ugly. The, I can't the, help it. The, the buddy, <laughs> they're trying to fill in the cracks. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Oh no, it's it's you know, it's it's the way of technology. But then they got filters that are so believable. You don't yeah, know, you enough. don't know what the hell you're looking at yeah, anymore. Exactly. All right, here's the next one up on our list of uh, of Have you seen a, a spiritual entity? Supernatural Entity, and this is from Dan Allison, who is a publisher, Faded Banner, retired newspaper editor. That says Don. Don Allison. What did I say? Dan. Dan. Don. Dan, Don. <laughs> Our names are not interchangeable. Oh, they're close. Yeah. One letter. One one little <laughs> leg on that O, and, and it's a Dan. Um, I saw my first entity in October 2018 in Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania. I was on the National Battlefield Park walking toward the Slider Farm, near Little Round Top, which was the field hospital for the Alabama Brigade, in which my ancestors fought in the battle. Wow. Uh, I saw some motion out on the corner of my eye, and when I looked down the hill, I saw a man on horseback. And at first glance, I thought this was part of the horseback rides offered at the park, but on closer inspection, I realized this was a Union cavalryman, and he was wearing a bun- uh, a what? Slouch hat? Okay. And a short Union Cavalry shell jacket. And it was, he was riding a beautiful brown horse, even though it was somewhat chilly day. The horse was sweaty. I could see a soiled Union saddle blankets and what appeared to be a McClellan saddle. The rider was slouched over. I could not see his face, and he was riding, riding like he was exhausted or injured. This appeared as solid and real as it can be after perhaps three or four seconds. It vanished before my eyes, and I was so stunned, I sat down for a moment to collect my composure. It happened so quickly in that even though I had a camera around my neck, I didn't think to shoot a photo. Yes. The more I thought about it, the more I realized I had indeed seen an apparition. Even though the horse was going through scrub trees, there was no, no noise, as there should have been. The horse was very sweaty, and it vanished quickly, and it was a truly stunning experience. And ironically, this was the area where Farnsworth's Union Cavalry Charge occurred uh, against the Alabama Brigade, which my ancestors fought. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. That's the weird part about that. There's the, so much power in that, though. Right. In those battlefields. I'm, you know, that's that's the kind of thing. Those are the kind of apparitions I would really love to see because... Mm. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're like little glimpses, at like windows of time, or if they're just these echoes of time that are still out there. But right. you're witnessing a piece of history, right? Even if it if it is just a ghostly apparition, it's still an, a piece of history that's playing out right in for you, in front of your eyes. Yeah. And you know, I mean, God, there was nothing worse than than the conditions those guys fought in and died in and battled in and. And they were, I mean, it was just a, an absolute nightmare by the sounds of it. And, uh, and the field hospitals, it was like, yeah. you, their version of hospital is, yeah, we're going to have to take that off, you know. <laughs> With a saw. Yeah, yeah, and they would, Here, saw, they would saw limbs. Here's some whiskey and a piece of leather. Oh, walk. yeah. I, I mean, want to saw that bone off. That's, yeah. You know, there were, there were doctors that could do it in under minutes. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they I probably just, had really sharp tools, yeah. but... I can't imagine that, you know, I mean, it's just unsanitary conditions. Yeah. And, and the fact that people live through any of that is really a, a marvel because, man, that's a whole different world. Thank God for progress. I'm just saying. Yeah. Come out to my area, Android says. We will all go to Gettysburg here. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, you know, here's the thing. We would love to do field yes. field shows. We would love to do on-location stuff, but... Unfortunately, it's just a it's it's a, a financial wall. It is, and so there will be a time as the as the shows grow that we'll be able to make those kind of commitments and be able to make those investments, and we will do it. Absolutely, we will. But it's just not yet. So be patient with us, folks. As the show grows, if you want to help, then keep spreading the word. Share these episodes, and uh, the more that the, they get seen, the more the people become a part of the family, the bigger the, you know, the show gets, the more we have resources to do things just like that. I'd love to, to tour. come to an area near you. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I mean, someday we're going to have to make commercials. <laughs> <laughs> just dumb commercials, but 
we'd have fun doing them. But yeah, we'll do, we'll do it when we can for sure. We'll get out there and uh, get the get a get a uh, the paranormal portal uh, fun truck and <laughs> go. go. Oh boy, it didn't sound right at all. <laughs> no, it didn't. Oh dear God. <laughs> Free puppies and candy just crawl in the back. Oh, no, 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 no. You did not do that. But we'd love to do that. We'd love to get out there and see you guys and, and be a part, you know, see what you guys are seeing. So um, here's one that has a picture. Okay. I don't know. Well, I don't know. It sounds like I don't know if it's any good. Let's go to one more, and then we'll go to some other stuff. we got some uh, a report from Sasquatch. Thanks for the call, David. We'll see you next time. Yeah, brother. Thank you so much. This is uh, from MPAC. Okay. I guess that's how you say it. This is uh, two years ago. He answered this question. Oh, wow. said, if you're speaking about ghosts or spirits per se, I've seen one once. When I was in the high school, my group of friends all hung out with my best at my best friend's house every day as she had the mom who knew we were all going to... to <laughs> Smoke and figured it was safer if we did it in the house with supervision. We parted there and basically all lived there. Once a month, we all chipped in to clean out, clean up our basement when we spent all our time. And usually, isn't that the 70s show? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> isn't that that 70s show? I think I saw that one. Uh, where we spent all our time. And usually we get lucky and find a, a, a nug of, of bud and, and while doing so. On this day, we were hoping to find some dropped green as we were so we were sober and waiting to pick up. And just for the context, her basement always had a creepy vibe to it, uh, like you were never alone. And the layout was strange. There was a back room besides the laundry room, which had individual stalls with no plumbing or anything, almost like an inside underground horse stable. It was peculiar to say the least. And my friends, my best friend's boyfriend, who also lived there had a tendency to go into this room to look for his tools or st or his storage, and he always left the door open with the light on so that we were always all reminding... What? Uh, with the light on, and we were always reminding him to turn off the light and close the door. I was in the main area of the basement emptying ashtrays and collecting beer cans <laughs> when I noticed that the door was open and the light was on, so I figured her boyfriend was down there with me, so I shouted out to... Uh, to out the catchphrase, Cody closed the door and turn off the light when you're done. And as I turned to say it, an older man wearing a white shirt and dirty jeans walked by the door super quick. And he was clearly not my friend's boyfriend. I walked over to the door and peered my head into the room to see, to see no one. And just as I stepped out, the light turned off and back on again. I bolted upstairs and told my best friend about it. And wow. it turned out, her grandfather passed in the in the house a few years back, and that was his that was his storage slash hobby room, and that's why he they didn't like having the door open or the lights on. It was too painful for them. It didn't feel like a sinister presence, but I definitely saw that guy walk by uh, without acknowledging me at all. Wow. Uh, a few years after high school, my mom passed away on Christmas morning. Aw, after a three year battle with cancer. Christmas was her favorite holiday, and it was the worst day of my life. After encouraging us to open up our last gifts, they removed her remains. What? After they removed her remains from my home, my maternal aunt insisted my sister and I go to her house for the night to watch a movie and kind of just sit in silence together, all grieving. While I was at my aunt's, I got the clearest, strongest whiff of my mother's perfume. She had worn the same brand for years, and my aunt was very high-end luxury living and would never wear the off-brand that my mom did. So it, it wasn't her or her home. I didn't, exact, I didn't react noticeably and just stayed quiet and solemn. Later that night, I was lying down trying to sleep with my, with my sister, and we were discussing the trauma of the day. My sister is a very logically-minded nurse, who has never believed in the afterlife or spirits or any type of unexplained supernatural event, but I brought the perfume up to her and she went completely silent, mm. not like her at all, LOL. And she said, I thought I imagined that smell. Uh, I smelt it too. And to clarify, we were on complete opposite sides of the room and mm. my aunt's home with my aunt and our dog separating us. We last figured it was my mom saying her final farewell before crossing over wherever it is we go when our souls leave. I'm not a religious person 
And I don't necessarily believe in heaven or hell scenario, but something does happen to our souls or spirits afterwards. And there's been too many eyewitness accounts of, uh, and too many near-death experiences. It's one of the only comforts we get when facing mortality. Yeah, that's powerful. They, uh, and they didn't bother to ask their aunt if she may have shared that same thing. Right. I'm sure the aunt would have noticed uh, if uh, if that had been if, if, present, yeah, yeah. yeah, would be interesting. Yeah, but maybe they all just kind of kept quiet. But who knows? Maybe they weren't that close with the ant. I don't know. But I think I think scents are. I've said this many times, and I get redundant as hell on the show, and I'm sorry for that. For those of you that have been around a while, but I think one of the most common ways that our loved ones communicate with us, because it's probably the least frightening way they can do it, is by presenting you with a smell. A smell that brings back a memory of right. some kind, and and sometimes it's cologne or perfume or right. or something like that. I mean, that's really common. But some well, and they say that the smell is the most, the strongest, most connected sense uh, sense that we have. Right, right. So I think I think that that is one of the one of the key ways that you right. will have yeah. loved ones visiting you is when you catch the smells. It's like, oh, that reminds me of so and so. Well, that's the message I think. Right. I mean, that's my personal belief, and you believe whatever you want, of course, but that's mine. So Ruger says, I have a full conversation, three voices right at a cabin window. I stepped outside, nature call, and they were talking about where, where I went. He says he's working on pulling out the uh, the uh, the uh, audio, uh, and uh, gee, I'd like to hear that. Yeah, no kidding. That's amazing. They were talking about where you went? These yeah. are disembodied voices? Yeah. Wow, that's really impressive. That's great. I'd love to hear that. Just uh, you know, anything, any in, anything like that that you guys have, I'd love to have you send it to me via you know email to paranormalportalradio at gmail dot com. Uh, apparently, he uploaded. Did did you lo- up that lo- upload? Send that a to link. Your, yeah, send a link. Send a link. Oh, yeah, we can uh, we can play a link. That doesn't take much, but uh, you know, we'll definitely look into it. What? If the portal just. The portal just let it roll and more people show up. Chris and Shri are like deleting every video and blaming Wes. What? Yeah, well. All right. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. But, um, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Nope. All right. So um, let's continue. And uh, let's see. I wanted to get to some of the other stuff now. I hadn't realized I didn't open the three panel, did I? I did not, Don. Oh. This one's, I think I'll cover this one tomorrow. Oh. Because it's nothing, is oh. no, not really spooky. It's more newsworthy. But we're going to get into some Bigfoot reports because we got the time and we got the will and the energy and the gumption to get into some uh, cryptids anyway. So you want to get into some creatures? By God, we got you some creatures up in here. And the first one is coming from B105country.com. Uh, nurse reports Bigfoot sighting in northern Minnesota. Northern Minnesota. I'm an I'm a I'm a, a native Minnesotan. I, I currently live in Don's neck of the woods now, but uh, I started out in Minnesota. So what's going on in Minnesota? Well, glad you asked. Where the hell did my mouse though? There it is. I'm glad you asked because that's what we're gonna find out right now. And uh, again, nurse reports Bigfoot sighting in northern Minnesota. This is by Lauren Wells, published June sixth, twenty twenty two. Brand new. And uh, again, this is B105, uh, the Northland's number one for new country. Woohoo! Yeehaw! Bow, 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 you know what's weird, Don? What's that? I for my for weird, my entire weird, life. Don? Yes. Your for my entire life, life I was <laughs> I was a country music hater. Yeah. Because I think it's because my dad was very much force feeding me country throughout sure. my entire childhood, and uh, and I was like, oh my god, so. Um, as, as maybe as a matter of principle, more than anything, I was like, yeah, I don't like country. I don't want to listen to that. Well, turn that off. What is it? And I'll be darned if I haven't turned on country a few times now and been like, ah, that's nice. <laughs> Just find it relaxing. Right. I don't know what's happening to me, Don. What's going on? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> kind of, I don't know, man. I don't know. We're going to die, man. We're going to die. It's got to be the apocalypse, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> It's very weird. I never like country, and now I'm kind of listening to country, and I'm kind of okay with it. So I'm, I'm kind of force-fed country at work. Oh, there you go. And 
How's that going for you? Uh, yeah. Not um, real well? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Coffee. Coffee helps. All right. It's not quite Halloween or spooky season just yet, but that doesn't mean you can't read all about Bigfoot sighting, right? I came across one I never heard or read about before, and it's pretty creepy. Bigfoot is a big topic. Uh, love these narratives. Of conversation year round, and while there's never been a definitive evidence that the creature lives and breathes, there are these there are somewhat convincing encounters from people all over, including here in the Twin Ports and beyond. Twin Ports is up in the north of the Arrowhead region of um, Minnesota. In fact, late last year, video surfaced of a possible Bigfoot sighting in northern Wisconsin. A duck hunter in the Powell Marsh area shared video and photos of the alleged encounter. And while you might roll your eyes at this encounter, he's a senior investment manager who wanted to remain anonymous, which means he has nothing to gain from sharing details of his sighting. Another Bigfoot video had skeptics rethinking their beliefs when it, sur re when it surfaced. The video comes from Michigan, courtesy of a trail camera. The hunter who ca caught the footage shared it with Animal Planet, and they were so convinced they left the next day to investigate. Hmm. Now I've come across a Bigfoot sighting that I've never read about before. This sighting hits close to home as it was reported to have happened in Ely, Minnesota. Ely is about two hours from Duluth. The sighting happened in fall of 2020, but I didn't come across it until recently. The sighting was shared with Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, or the BFRO, which dives into each and every sighting shared on their website. According to this specific report, the sighting happened on November 9th of 2020, but was submitted by the person who saw it in December of the same year. Oh, it was just a couple months. It was just a month later. Yeah. So, like I mentioned, it happened just about five miles west of Ely. The sighting happened around 11 in the morning while the, witness, while the weather was clear. Although it was raining earlier in the morning, the sighting happened westbound on Highway 169. If you're familiar with the area, it was just past the Twin Lakes road sign. So what did the creature look like? The reporting party said it was about 6 to 6 feet 5 inches tall and was walking on two legs like a human. It was so big that it was able to cross the entire road in just a few steps. The person who reported the sighting was in the car with their family who did not see the creature because everything happened so fast. It should be noted that the area the sighting happened at is very dense forest, which would be prime condition for Bigfoot sighting. No? The person who ran the BFRO website at the time spoke to the woman who reported the sighting. He said she is credible and works as home health care nurse in a nearby county. She was only in the area that day to visit relatives. She cleared up a lot of questions one might have about the sighting. Could it be a human that was dressed in a costume? Could it have been a hunter? Was it a, a hunting season? She doesn't rule, out, rule anything out, but did stand firm on what she saw. It was, she was so shook that when her husband urged her to turn around and try to spot it again, she wouldn't. Just last year, I learned about another Bigfoot sighting, this time in Wisconsin. A local to the Milwaukee area was driving when he says he spotted the mystical creature on the side of a windy road. He was so sure of the sighting that his dad went back to the same area later to try to see it for himself. Yeah, that doesn't work out real well. That, uh, you know, if, uh, if Bigfoot's are are appearing somewhere it doesn't pay to go visit that area later unless you're just looking for prints you know because they don't just stick around you know they don't no they don't <laughs> no they do not no they do not so that was uh from northlands number one for new country b105 country.com so um i'm gonna post something in the chat here uh, -huh. uh if you want to submit um, links for us. Submit submit it to this link. So Rug, this should get you. Um, what is the link? It, the link is to my Google Drive. Um, it's my share folder on Google Drive. So hopefully that'll work. Why is it too big? Yeah, well, it's a video, uh, or it's a well. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter if it's a video or whatnot. If you upload it there, I'll be able to see it. So hopefully that'll work. Um, so there you go. Okay. Well, we can certainly look at that. But 
Here's another one. Uh, this one is coming from Sasquatch Chronicles blog, of course, Mr. Wes Germer. It's a great site for great information, not only just for Sasquatch Chronicles, but lots of other reports. And this one, this report is from June 4th. It's really new. It's called the White Monkey. Monkey pox, what? No, the White Monkey. Monkey pox. That does no, not say monkey pox. Okay. All it right. doesn't. I'm just saying. Okay. Let's have a look at it. And this is, uh, again, Sasquatch Chronicles blog. And uh, the listener writes a little, little background to put things in perspective. I grew up very poor with a very abusive father. Uh, that's sad. Growing up, I would stay out as long as I could and, and would go into the woods and lose myself in nature. I taught myself to track animals and learned all about game trails and how animals acted just by going out and watching nature for hours on end. I saw bobcats, learned to track deer, and watch coyotes playing. I learned very early on to conceal myself well. I was about 11 or 12 when I started going off into the woods. I live in Maryland, which is hardly a Sasquatch state, lol. I didn't know anything about Sasquatch at that early age. Here's the thing, though. I was near the creek that I used to follow, and it was maybe early afternoon. I can't remember exact dates. I have memory loss due to a military and a war, but that's another story. It was around 1987 or 88. I was walking the creek looking for crayfish when I heard a noise in a tree. I looked up and was probably 90 feet in the tree, and I was about 200 feet away from the tree. Looking at me was this white little thing that was about two foot in length, and I didn't know what to make of it. At first, I thought it was a monkey, but there are no monkeys native to Maryland that I'm aware of. Right. I thought, okay, it must be a squirrel, but I've never seen one so big. It looked at me and noticed I was watching it, so it went around the tree. I walked over to the tree to get the other side, but I never saw it again. I thought that was odd, but being a kid, I just went back to looking for crayfish. But it truly has always stayed in the back of my mind as to what it could have been. After listening to your show and hearing uh, there are white Sasquatch in Pennsylvania, I've always wondered if maybe I saw a little one. There, there have been several reports about these things in Maryland being seen, so who knows? The other one encounter where I saw something was in the late 90s. I left for work early because of my job. It must have been around just short of 5 a.m., and I was driving by this open field when I saw a really weird dog. Keep in mind, I've been watching coyotes for a very long time. I know what they look like, uh, stalking and hunting. And I've had German Shepherds since I was 18, so I'm familiar with how a canine moves. This dog, though, looked really weird. It was stalking towards the road I was on, but it moved like a cat, not a dog. It seemed wider than a canine, and its head was really big and wide. Sounds like a dog man, doesn't it? Yeah. I had never heard of a dog man at this time, oh. so... I slowed down, but in the end, I kept going. That, too, has always stayed in my mind. Hindsight being twenty twenty. I wish I'd stopped and really looked. Now, I don't know if that would have been a good idea or not. Why was it stalking towards the road? This person was on the road. <laughs> Might have been stalking this person, but couldn't catch up. So that's not, that's not the only things, though. My father had actually been a Christian minister, but he was... Always a fire and brimstone guy, very hard man. But despite that, it introduced me to another world. And I do believe in the spiritual world, and I've had many supernatural encounters. Here's the part where you come in, though. I, I now still live in Maryland, but still in a very rural area. About 400 meters behind the house runs a creek where I've found deer kills from coyotes and all sorts of animal tracks that have, uh, we have had issues with a pack of coyotes, and I used my German shepherds to control that problem. We have four German blood true working dogs, and the male is huge and extremely territorial. Oh, I've really gotten into the whole Sasquatch thing, and I've really wanted to see one. So, like an idiot, I went on YouTube and your show and started blasting sounds into the backwoods from a Bose speaker. Oh, no. That was pretty loud. Oh, no. <laughs> this started last fall of 2021. Mating call. Oh, no. So <laughs> <laughs> grab, your, grab your lipstick. <laughs> so about a month ago, I got up to let my dogs out and feed before I left for work. And at this time, 
I was getting up at 2.30 a.m. and everything, getting everything done so I could leave by 3.20 a.m. Well, the dogs ate, and I put the, them in the backyard as usual, but the thing is, they wouldn't go off the back porch. Now, the rest I'm going to tell you may be hard to believe, but I swear I'm not making it up. For just a few seconds, I heard something like the Sierra sounds, but where the sound was, they sound like chimps. It was brief, and it actually made me feel really uncomfortable. Now, the other weird thing is maybe a couple of weeks ago during the week, I was awakened around 11, around 11, something by the noise about 100 meters away from the house, just in the wood line. I swear, Wes, it sounded like something beating on a tree. Once I really woke up and came to my senses, I realized that despite the noise being so strange and loud, none of the dogs which sleep in the room with me were making any noise, no growls or barks, all awake but just laying low and staying quiet. First thing I did was reach for my phone to record, but as soon as I grabbed it, everything went silent. I kept listening but didn't hear anything, so I thought maybe it was a farmer doing something instead. I then heard it again, but it was much further away and my hairs went up. I started recording from my bedroom without getting out of bed, and I did catch some of it, but it's really hard to hear. I then came to my senses as I honestly did start to get scared of what it might actually be. From listening to your show and Les and all these people, I actually just thought of reaching out in my mind, and I simply said, if that really is you, I don't want to see you, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you to leave. He, he called it over. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. I prayed for a long time that night, Wes, and I haven't heard anything since and haven't had any weird, creepy feelings either. You're, you're right. So here it is. Okay. Yes, you went and blared a bunch of mating calls or whatever out your back <laughs> door Yeah. and you called them in. And then you told them to go away. Jesus Christ, just go away. Yeah. Okay, yep. great. Oh, you hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. Here's Goodness. a response Sorry. by by Candace V on the on the yeah. on there. She said, "We got instant responses with the angry part of the serious sounds. Six of us were at the top of the mountain here in Massachusetts in the Berkshires. We opened all the car doors towards the valley and turned the volume all the way up and blasted the creepy part of those vocals and almost instantly." had a tree knock directly wow. behind us. And wow. then the youngest person in our group said, what's that? And we all looked to where he is referring to. We all see amber-colored orb come flying straight at us over the mountaintops. And I think I, 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 I kind of just stopped right in front of us and then moved with intent and traced the treetops slowly. Lowered itself behind the trees to our left, and we left within five minutes of that. Yeah. I thought for sure we were about to be abducted by aliens, and now, with all the knowledge from all, from with all the knowledge from other experiences, I believe it was something Sasquatch can do at will. I believe it's the energy chi ball. Uh, I've done it myself. We all can do it, and it's all about energy calming the mind and lots of concentration. Well, I don't know about chi balls. Maybe uh, you know. I, I certainly, I certainly believe we ha we are energetic beings. Right. Um, but that's pretty wild. So pretty cool accounts, but again, you're right. That guy didn't. He 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 rolled out the red carpet, yeah. and then I was like, oh, you know, oh, wait a minute, and I got bacon, <laughs> I got bacon. <laughs> yeah, wait for the fat <clears throat> guys to come running. What? Yeah, and then no, the, you got to go away. You got to go away. Then the no big way. guys are coming. Nope, I'm out of bacon. I'm out of bacon. <laughs> no bacon. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with people. <laughs> There's an old saying: Be careful what you wish for. Right? <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Be careful what you're wishing for, folks, because, by God, it might start tree knocking right next to you. It just might. <laughs> All right. Bacon. What are we doing for time? Bacon. bacon. I love bacon. So, 827. We still got a lot of time. I thought we were cruising up to the end of the show. But no. Now we got an article from Mysterious Universe, Wonder ladies and gentlemen. Says that we have a chee ball. At Christmas, my sister's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a cheese ball or a chee ball? Mm, chee ball. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Do you like some chee ball? Ah, Suspicious right. silence, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of 
Suspicious Silence says, I wanted a cool name for my paranormal channel. It came out sounding like a new metal, metal band from 2002. Yeah, it does. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. It does, yeah. <clears throat> right up with like Chugaboom. <laughs> sorry. Ch- Chugaboom. Ch- <laughs> Levi. <laughs> sorry, to, bud. I'm sorry. Good to see you. It Suspicious is a great Silence. name, though. <laughs> Uh, great to great to meet you. I don't recognize your name. No uh, kidding, those are my cheesy poofs. Welcome to the show, and uh, hope you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> he's he's froggy over there. I had to cough. I get a little froggy. I don't talk a lot during the days, and then when I talk on the nights, like blah, blah, blah. and then everything that's in me comes and starts loosening up. So yeah, it's good to meet new listeners, man. That's awesome. No kitty, bad kitty. Hey, Kenny, that's my papa. <laughs> All right, let's go to Mysterious Universe. Uh, there's a large mysterious ape. That isn't a Bigfoot or the Yeti. And really? Ladies and gentlemen, check out Mysterious Universe. Oh. Fantastic sites. Our a good friend of ours, Mr. Brent Swanser, is an is a, uh, a, a contributor, a contributor, and author yeah. over there. Oh, look at that! That's actually a new new. Uh, this is their new layout. Yeah, the new they layout. they redid the whole site, yeah. and this is what we're talking about, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Kind of cool. This article is by Nick Redford. We got to get him on the show. Okay. Um, and it, <laughs> yes, Don, okay, I'll get, I'll get him. God. I can't, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. <laughs> no, I know they're God. tough. Some of these people are really tough to get a hold of. Uh, large mysterious ape that isn't Bigfoot or the Yeti by Nick Redfern, J- June 3rd, 2022. Definitely go over there and check out a mysterious universe. They got thousands of articles over there. Great, great articles. They have a lot of talented writers. Um, and, uh, you should check them out. All right. Nick Redfern says, excuse me. When the world, when the word Bigfoot is mentioned in conversations, for most people, it prompts imagery of a gigantic, bulky, eight to nine feet tall man monsters roaming the frozen mountains and massive forests of the Pacific Northwest. Certainly, there is no shortage of such reports. It should be noted, however, that as incredible as it may sound, Bigfoot might not be the only cryptid ape that that calls the United States its home. In Florida, and particularly so, so in the state's swampy, wonder, wooded areas, sorry, that was one big word. I was like, what? <clears throat> There's a beast known as the skunk ape, which I don't think is a different thing at, at all. I think it's just a regional name because they emit a musk when they're, you know, when they're startled or whatever. It's a creature whose territory also includes Arkansas and North Carolina and the wilds of Florida. However, where the beast really dominates, there is a really good reason for suggesting that the skunk ape is a distinctly different creature to that reported on the West Coast. Predominantly, it's the difference in height and bulk that suggests the skunk skunk ape and Bigfoot just might not be the one and the same. Admittedly, an argument could be made, made rather that the radical differences in the terrain, temperatures, the food supplies in both locations has led to the development of a smaller form of Bigfoot in the Florida region, but that essentially both animals are one and the, and the same. And there's also Bergman's rule, right? The Bergman's rule is the, the biological belief that the closer a species lives to the equator, the smaller it is. The further away a species lives from the equator, the larger it is, because it's you know obviously easier living when you don't have to make it through harsh winters and you know probably don't need as much size and mass to make it through. But anyway, um, let's keep going here. Confounding the matter even more, however, there is the fact that some reports of the creature are more befitting a description of the mammoth Bigfoot, as will soon become clear. Uh, Befitting a description of the mammoth Bigfoot, as will soon become clear. That sentence tripped me up. Although there uh, there is no firm consensus on what the skunk ape is, Bigfoot or something else of a related nature, there is no denying the rich and diverse body of reports that exist on the creature. It's important to note that sightings of the skunk ape can't be blamed on the current craze for Bigfoot that exists today. Reports of the hairy, upright animal are nothing new, and they date back decades. A spate of skunk ape encounters occurred in Florida on the, la- on the late 1970s to 1980. The monstrous matter began in early October. A 22-year-old man was hitchhiking on US-441 around a half a mile from the town of Bellevue, and it was an area noted for its light forest land and something which would have offered perfect cover for a skunk ape. And just maybe it did exactly that until, however, it, it decided to make its presence known to the terrified man. 
It was the creature's nauseating smell. They don't call it the skunk ape for nothing. That first alerted the man to the fact that there was a wild animal in the area. He only realized just how wild when the hairy, dark, and upright thing made a brief appearance before vanishing into the woods. Just a couple of days later, a security guard at a nursery in uh, Apopka reported to the local police something that was both amazing and controversial, something resembling Bigfoot, with fur or hair of a gray-red color, attacked him violently and tore off his shirt. Donnie Hall said he let, he let loose with his gun, but to no effect. And there was the, the, then there was the story of a Bellevue welder who also, who also the man beast met the man beast, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Saw the man beast. Okay. He said, I'm six feet tall and it was bigger than me. It smelled horrible like garbage. Such was the local attention given to the sightings by the populace, the press, and even the police. The Florida Game and Freshwater Commission got involved, and they even sent out one of their personnel to take a look at a, t- a line of tracks found in the Ap- Apopko Nursery. The result was that the tracks appeared to be man-made, and of course that essentially means nothing. If the skunk ape is a five-toed bipedal animal, just like us, then they would look like human prints. Good point, yeah. <laughs> That's not it, by the way. That picture is not a representation of it. <laughs> One month later, the Ocala National Forest was the site of a startling encounter with a skunk ape. The forest was the perfect terrain for a cryptid apes to live and hide in. It runs more than 600 square miles in size and is heavily and densely forested and is filled with springs and swamps. And for a large, aggressive ape, there's no shortage of potential food supplies in the Ocala National Forest. It it is home to red foxes, raccoons, boar, deer, squirrels, possums, and gophers. The November 1977 case was reported by none other than a 67-year-old Baptist minister. Hmm. It says the Reverend S.L. Waitley, who was the pastor of the Fort McCoy Baptist Church, It was while he was chopping wood on the fringes of the forest that Watley caught sight of the creature, and he said it was standing upright in the middle of some palmetto bushes, and that sapsucker was at least seven and a half, maybe eight feet tall. The skunk ape had dark, lighter than black hair on its head and chest, and not much on its arms, and none on its face, and it had kind of a flat face, flat nose, and its eyes were sunk into its sockets. Displaying what some might perceive as behavior not exactly befitting that of a Baptist minister, Watley raced to his truck to grab his axe, as in as in his own immortal words, me and that creature was going to mix it up. Oh, wow. <laughs> By the time Watley returned from this truck, however, the monster was gone. His last words on the matter to the press, uh, alcohol hadn't touched his lips since 1930s. Three years later, in 1980, Altoona, Florida, became the moment or the magnet for skunk ape enthusiasts. Oh, thank you. Wow, hey, <laughs> Gary. Gary. Thanks. Hey, thanks, oh, man. Love you, brother. Thank you. Very good. We should ask Carrie, too. Uh, what is your feeling, if you wouldn't mind saying in the chat, do you think that the skunk ape is a different being entirely, or do you think... It's just uh, a, another... A different type of Bigfoot. Or yeah. just a Bigfoot, yeah. um, you know, and it's just regionally a little bit different because of its surroundings. So I'd love to hear your thoughts because uh, Kerry's been in there. He's been, he's been in there researching, so uh, I trust what, you have, what your opinion is. Um, so it said the skunk ape is a, uh, in magnets uh, in Altoona, Florida. It so happens that Altoona is also dominated by the Ocala National Forest, where the Reverend S.L. Waitley almost mixed it up with the monster. A few years previously, it wasn't the sighting of a skunk ape that caused so much commotion throughout town, but the discovery of gigantic size 18 footprints. Opinion was significantly divided on what these tracks showed. Doug Sewell was the chief investigator for the Lake County Sheriff's Department. He came straight to the point, I think it's a hoax. There's no indication that something that big was something that big enough to make those prints went back through these woods. For less sure, 
fear, oh, far less sure than fakery could explain away everything, was Lake County Sergeant D. Kirby, who made casts of a number of the massive tracks. Not only did he say that they showed a definitive arching of the, uh, of the step and five toes, he added that there was even some wrinkling to in the instep, all of which suggested the tracks were not made by something as down-to-earth as carefully carved wooden feet. Kirby also noted that the prints had a full four feet of distance between each of the ones, each of one. This led Kirby to conclude that the creature had to have weighed somewhere in the region of a thousand pounds and stood somewhere between 10 and 12 feet in height. So much for Bergman's rule. Yeah. <laughs> they seem plenty big in Florida, whatever. Uh, not only does this suggest something somewhat different to the skunk ape, it also describes an animal far bigger than the average Bigfoot. It is important to note that if the tracks were made by hoaxers, then the perpetrators chose the wrong place to make them. The site of the tracks was a remote area of the forest, and the only reason why they were there, they were found at all was because contractors working for the U.S. Forest Service were in the area and stumbled on them. The affair was never resolved, and it's important to note that the skunk ape is still with us. Sightings are still being made. Absolutely. Did Kerry have a response? Yeah. I, yes. I'm leaning towards there being several species and the skunk ape being a subspecies. We've seen them looking like us, and then looking more ape-like. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. There is a, a pretty wide variety of descriptions. There's the whole, it looks like a gorilla, except that the different nose. There's the paddy version, which looks right. kind of like a Neanderthal or something. And then there's the chimpanzee-looking ones, and then the more human-looking ones. And and I, I think that's a good point. Good takeaway on that. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. Um, very, very true. Who knows, folks? There could be a whole whole catalogs of these things out there. No doubt. It's you know, if for some people it might be like, well, you know, it's a big stretch because they're, if they're out there at all, it's probably just one thing. But one thing that's worldwide, that doesn't make right. that. I mean, it makes more sense that there would be biological diversity in there, right. wouldn't it? Yeah. Because how would one thing colonize the entire planet? Right. So I think I think that's a great takeaway. Good call. Good call. You know, and you you wonder if there might be just like. Um, Oh, we got a call. Oh, we got a call. Yeah, let's get to the okay, call. Cool. This looks like uh, looks like a call. But anyway, what are you going to say first? I didn't. Oh, mean I was just going to say, you know, um, genetic, genetic mutations within the family groups too. Right. So there know, is it that. Just may just be that. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is what it is. It's right. I think so. I think so. All right. Let's get to the call and find out who's who's burning up the the airwaves here. This is area code seven zero one. You're on the air. Hello, long-time listener, first-time caller <laughs> today. How you doing, Naysay? Good to hear I you. I knew I recognized that prefix. I know, I did too. <laughs> What's going on Minnesota tonight? Minnesota boys. Minnesota in the house. Right. Welcome, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. What's on your mind tonight? I thought I would share my thought of a exper experience that I believe possibly was a Bigfoot, but I cannot be 100% since like that last story about the woman who saw it cross the street, uh -huh. it happened so quickly. So if I may digress, some of the old timers may have heard this. I mm -hmm. think it's been a while since I've shared it on your, your story, but it made me think about it when you brought up Northern Minnesota and we've talked in private about right. the sightings on my reservation mm -hmm. and that, but this happened in Detroit lakes, Minnesota on South shore drive where my parents owned, my parents, my foster grandparents uh -huh. owned a home on the South Shore. And down the road, about a mile and a half, was the Long Bridge re uh, Resort, where we would go there because they had a little candy store in there and a little deli in there and treats. And also there was Long Bridge, where we would jump off the bridge into the lake. Okay. So my Grandparents, they had those really old, heavy-duty metal bikes that weighed a couple hundred pounds. Metal. If you remember those really old metal bikes? You had to put all. You said bikes. Bike, like a bicycle. Okay. Yeah. But back back in the day, the bikes were like really heavy yeah. steel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got you. I got you your reference. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah, you practically had to put all your weight into it just to get it going because it was so huge and heavy. Yeah. So I'm yeah. riding my bike 
to Long Bridge because I wanted to go spend some money from doing chores with my grandparents. Uh-huh. Well, on the way to Long Bridge, there's a curve that they call it Dead Man's Curve because people have gone off the curve many times. Okay. Well, to the left of coming up on this curve is a huge cornfield with a cluster of trees in the center of it. So as I'm coming up, as I'm coming up to the curve and all of a sudden to the left of me, and this is in the fall, just before we go back to school, because we would stay there during the whole summer. So the corn was high and starting to go brown because it's harvest time. Mm -hmm. And so corn, you know, that gets up to about six feet tall. Yeah. And so I'm rolling and then all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye, I swear I see something taller than the corn. Oh, And it was, it was huge. And then when I turned to look, it was like it ducked down, but you could see a swath in the corn coming from that forest area. And as I saw the direction of the swath, it was heading almost to where that curve was. So in my mind, I'm like, if that thing started running straight in the line that it's going, it before I would, and so I started freaking out. So with all of my weight and all of my flight, I put the pedal literally to the metal <laughs> to get around that corner and get to Longbridge. And wow. so when I get to Longbridge, I'm so worried, I call my grandparents and ask them if they would come and pick me up because I said I wasn't feeling good to bike back <laughs> and they wouldn't do it. I called a couple of my friends to see if they would meet me because, you know, I was scared to go back on that same route. And that's the only way to get back to my grandparents. So on the way back, I had to, well, I chose to go on the wrong side of the highway or the road. It's sure. kind of a, uh, inter- interstate yeah. road. And so, uh, so I had to go on the wrong side of fear of that dead man's curve because people hug the curb right. when they come back and I didn't want to be on that shoulder where they're hugging the curb. Right. But with all my might, I did everything I could to go there. And then when I got back, I told my brother and my cousins and my friends there what I saw. Mm-hmm. And so I, I got a bunch of hassle about it. <laughs> and so, uh, that's crazy. So I still don't know to this day and, and reflecting on it and looking back at it and because of uh, Leonard Nimoy and in search of mm-hmm. and my fascination with Sasquatch and Bigfoot, that's what my assumption is that it was. Right. Because it, it, it to me, it just couldn't be a man because it seemed like it was almost a foot above the corn. Yeah. And that's... then when I, when I, when I looked, and it like squatted down. And then when you saw the swath mm-hmm. that was made through the corn, that's when I'm like, this is something big. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. That's enough to keep you paddling hard though. <laughs> I bet yeah. You, I bet you got that bike well, moving. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays I'm more excited because as I talk to some of my elders and ask them about Bigfoot and Sasquatch, Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of them have said, for the most part, you know, they're 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 not threatening. However, you know, like everything, you have a couple bad eggs yeah. every now and then. So you know, it's always it's always warranted to be cautious, no matter what you're doing. Right, right. No, I agree. I think I so, think that's that's really very true, and and it kind of speaks to the intelligence of them. You know right. that they they're not just one size fits all. I think there's a whole, a whole behavioral spectrum, much like we have, but I mean, even, even every animal, there's a behavioral spectrum. Like there's a good dog and then there's the one that bites everybody. And, you know, they might be from the same litter, so it's hard to say, but there's, there's no doubt. Some, some well, of them I'm sure are, are, but I think they must have some kind of rules. I really do kind of believe that they have some kind of rules, rules, R U L E S because, they, they seem okay. to all adhere to the same principles and the same behaviors and, 
and it, it's very interesting how they avoid people and, you know, how they, they handle being seen. And, and it's very, very intriguing. Like there's a strategy involved and there's rules and it's just my opinion, but I, I think they're a very intelligent thing. Well, I, I, I think about how like animals can sense an uh, individual, you mm. know, like their attitude or their demeanor sure. and stuff, you know, like dogs and cats, they, you know, they can tell what you're feeling and how you're doing. And I, and I think that these entities have that same ability. And sure. I would even go so far that I believe that they're uh, tele telepathic sure. where they can read our mind. Right. You know, but that's that's my own assumption. And your your question about the skunk ape and Bigfoot and Sasquatch, I think the biggest difference is probably just the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Could very well be. You you might be right, brother. Well, it's great to hear from you. Right. Thanks for well, calling. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's lovely to have the opportunity. Any opportunity to hear Don's voice in the background, you know, oh, take advantage of it. Hear Don's voice in the background rolling his eyes? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you, Naysay. Thanks for calling in, man. It's good to hear from yep. you. All right, share the giggles, chat room. Toodles. All right, we'll see ya. Yeah, I think he's right. I think, yeah, there's, he probably saw one. I think he probably saw one. I mean, what else could stand taller than corn and then yeah. duck down? Like, yeah. oh, it sees me. Pumpkinhead. It's got to be Pumpkinhead. Yeah, our children of the corn. Yeah. A lot of ladders out there. Damn. Malachi, he wants Malachi. you too. Malachi, he wants you too. Yeah. That's All cool. right. Well, how are we on time? We're actually 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Wow. Kind of flying by. The whole night, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, chased by Sasquatch, the deer ran to the human hunter. What is the unknown talking about? I think I, I recognize that story, but... Don't know it. Don't know it, my friend. Luna's going to live stream. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to see you, Ken. Thanks for stopping in. It's good to see you, brother. It's been a while, but I'm glad you remember where we are. Yep, you remember where home is. Well, you can always go out and play in the play in the play in the playground, but remember where your home is. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. It's good to see uh, good to see everybody here tonight. That's really cool. Um, I guess we got enough. What is it? Ten minutes? I said. Yeah, got, it's yeah. not a lot of time. Not a lot of time to dive into something else. Peter Jackson movies. You got to love Peter Jackson movies. They're just so <laughs> freaking weird. They are, but he's really good, though. He and uh, who's that Guillermo del Toro? Del Toro? His he's movies are twisted. really bizarre. He's he's really the one bizarre. that did Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. And he, he's done quite a few more. As a matter of fact, he's a... He's an H.P. Lovecraft uh, junkie. Oh, that shows. I guess that makes sense. I, yeah. wonder, I wonder how he came up with some of the creatures yeah, and all these, Lovecraft like junkie. in the in the Hellboy series. Well, yeah, and you know what's you know what's weird about him though? He also does children's cartoons. Oh, that's well, it's not really. Ch it, yeah, yeah, it is. Troll it is. Hunters. It's kind and, of uh, kids. Arcadia and yep, yep. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the guy that was voicing his lead actor in the Troll Hunter had uh, passed away. That's too bad. He was uh, a young guy too. He was Chekhov in the Star Trek series, the newest ones. Really? Because yeah. that, uh, are you talking about Troll Hunters? Because the main goblin in there is uh, no, no. I'm talking about the kid, the the one. Oh, the kid, really? Yeah, yeah. He was he was the Chekhov in the newer Star Star Trek series. Really? Yep. He didn't sound like he had any kind of an accent in that. No, I I, I don't know that any yeah. of that was legitimate, but uh, it was his voice, ah. and, and he had passed away unfortunately. So. They kind of changed the whole direction of that show. Right, because... Uh, who it was, was entertaining, it? though. What is... What, who played Frasier? Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer yeah. was the lead troll. Yeah, he yeah. was the main troll. Yeah. Yeah, so that was... Yeah, you can, you can tell his voice oh, anywhere. God, it's like, yeah. oh, God, that's Kelsey that's, Grammer. That's Kelsey Grammer, yeah. Yep, it's just like Sean Connery. Oh, yeah. I did not. Ah, uh, that's, that's what your mother, mother said last night. <laughs> that's what your mother said. <laughs> <laughs> I love that skit. <laughs> my, new, my new name is Turd Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> Saturday Night Live skit, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of in the Wayback Machine. <laughs> yeah. What was it, Jeopardy with with yeah. Burt Reynolds and uh, Sean Connery? And, yes. And then various other people. It yeah. was hilarious. Oh, it was Old funny. Saturday Night Live, back when oh, it was funny. My goodness. Back when it was funny. <sighs> so. <laughs> All these wow. people, are, like the chat room's just bailing now. Like, like, what the hell is that like, talking about now? <laughs> They're all leaving. Don't leave. It's not over yet. Oh, We're still geez. here. 
No, I, I we are winding it out, though, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, well, yeah. It's getting to be 52, that time. About five minutes left. I don't know what else to do here. I guess we could try to read one or two more of these. You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're not on the network tonight. No, it's true. We can do overtime. All right, here's a shorter one. This is from Cody Tenney. That was from the list, uh, Have You Seen a uh, Supernatural Entity? This person said, Back in 2013-14, I would stay at my friend's house a week at a time. Well, after a few hours, he told me that the house used to be a funeral home. Oh, man. Yikes. Uh, but you can you can already see where this is going. Yep. As my friend is outside, I'm in the living slash dining room. <laughs> and I look look into the kitchen. and Yeah, living room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's now got a living room. It used to be a funeral home, but there's now a living room. <laughs> and I look into the kitchen and see a girl standing there facing me. She looked to be between 12 and 14, and she had a white dress and long black hair. My eyes go wide, and I'm at full attention. And as I say hello, she runs out of my eyesight. So I quickly run to the kitchen to see where she went. But when I got there, she was gone. I go outside and ask my friend if, if he saw a girl come out, and he says no. So, yeah, the first time I saw a ghost with my naked eye, she looked like uh, the, the, grudge. the grudge, and the girl from the ring had a baby. <laughs> oh. Samara. Yeah, Samara. <laughs> Uh, this is, these are, looks like they're linking some other stuff there. Maggie, there's a bucket hat available on Teespring right now. Oh, did you get it done? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! It's, it's ready. It's just, I want to do yes. some tweaking to it. He wants to do some tweaking, but, but you can order But there's a bucket it. hat there. It's a bucket hat. Um, let's see. Have you ever seen a supernatural entity? This is Don Carter, D-O-N-N. -N. It says, um, I don't know. I was tempted to say no. But the truth is, I have no way of identifying what is or isn't supernatural. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to skip that one. Too, too much introspective stuff. Right. Here's one from Enotita Thanatos. Sounds possibly Greek. I don't know. Uh, have you ever seen a supernatural entity? I remember I took a photograph of the altar at a Roman Catholic church in Switzerland on a whim. Don't know why I took my camera with me, but in the first place, because I was not a tourist. I lived in the same neighborhood, visiting the church every day to light a candle and perform some personal rituals. That photo, I greatly regret deleting it uh, and dismissing it as an error of the light or dust, had a light formation on the altar that perfectly outlined Mother Mary and Infant Jesus. At the time, I was not properly aware of the perfect correspondence between consciousness and reality. So I deleted it and it was literally that I even, uh, I even checked with others. Some who said it was a manifestation uh, of consciousness and others who gave the usual optical illusion slash dust stuff. I decided on the latter, but I think I should have preserved that pick regardless. Yeah. Yeah. When in doubt, hold on to it. It doesn't take up that much drive. Now, there's plenty of room on a thumb drive to store pictures. There you go, yeah. No reason to delete. I still got pictures from so many years ago. Never actually gone through them and, and to check and see if I actually captured something supernatural. I wondered about that. But I don't actively go out and try to take pictures either. So, uh, Maggie, tell me about this paranormal portal. I don't know. what is What is Rachel talking about? Nicholas Cage did Elvis in the in the Wild at Heart. Oh. They're at their side. Side They're on the conversations. Side. They're on the side. I'm just trying to be a part of it. Uh, supernatural, not natural. So other than natural places, uh, blah blah blah. Okay, not a being itself, but in a Ouija session I attended many years ago, a glass moved around without any of us there doing anything to move it, and going very fast in different directions so nobody could move it. I'll tell you what, I've been watching Mind Seed TV, uh -huh. and I got to tell you, they've got some pretty, uh, pretty fascinating uh, episodes. They, they, there's a couple that they've shown, um, like no edits, just a, a full stream uh, of them going to a house with a lot of poltergeist activity. Right. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it doesn't look at it. It's from a, from a cell phone video. They had actual cameras going on around as well, but the lead guy had a cell phone camera, and he was going through documenting what they were doing they went into this kitchen looked and then they turned and looked at the the sign on the uh, wall it said do not turn off on a light switch and he kind of rattled the door 
And the next thing you know, there's a noise from the kitchen. He turns and all the tables, all the chairs are stacked way up under the table into the ceiling. Just like that. Like, mm. boom, a couple seconds, boom. There's that noise. He turns back. And I'm like, wow, that was really good. And another time, I mean, I, I, I will have to share that episode. But just go check out Mindseed TV uh, on their YouTube channel because it's really pretty fascinating. Now, could it be faked? Sure, I guess. Probably, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure how you'd pull off that because they had a few angles and, and actually, you know, it seems like they might be legitimately catching bizarre phenomena. They seem, they seem to catch a lot of it, which is kind of a red flag for me because I just don't know that supernatural stuff is ever that, that responsive. Right. I mean, it may be for a day or two, but it might not be for months and then right. a day or two or a week. And then, right. you know, so how they manage to catch all of this activity kind of makes you wonder i'm not saying it's absolutely real i'm not saying it's absolutely not yeah they're 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 taking a book out of zach's yeah zach baggins a page, yeah a page out of zach's book yeah could be he's got guns too but okay but uh definitely check it out yeah. mind seed okay. tv i think that's very interesting and uh you know if you're into the spiritual ghostly stuff definitely they got some good videos that are at the very least they're very entertaining and i like watching ghost shows anyway so well, it's there you go. Been a long time. I guess that's going to wrap it up for us, folks. So, Don gone. Don gone. Don gone almost, too. Don's, Don's gone. <laughs> Don's almost gone, yes. <laughs> but I hope you guys had a good time. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and being a part of the journey. If you're not subscribed, please get subscribed. I'd love to see you stick around and come back for more. We'll be doing this live again tomorrow night, and uh, I'll bring you <laughs> another two hours. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> Rachel says Zach Baggins is a genius. Also, I might be drunk. Yes, I think you are. <laughs> I think you are. I think his uh, merchandisers are genius. Rachel's a little, little deep in the sauce. Yeah, she, she got some um, sauce going on. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah, you too, Suspicious Silence. Thanks for coming in and uh, plugging your show, and, and yeah. uh, hope you're doing good, and good luck to you, man. If you want to come back, we'll be here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll be doing another live show. Wednesday, Friday, Saturdays are our live shows on YouTube. So two hours a pop. So check them out. Uh, if you want to come back, we'd love to have you. So that's all I got. Teespring, of course, is the place to get your portal right. gear. And I just posted a, a, a promo code for 15% off. Use our friends. O-U-R-F-R-I-E-N-D. S? Our friends. Yes, with an S. S. Okay. Friends. Our um, friends. Is is that all one word or is there a space? All one word, yeah. Okay, all one word. word. Yep. Our Here. friends. Our friends. 15% off. We'd love to see you. Help support the show. <laughs> As always, good night, Mom. Good to good see night, you. Love Mom. you. Uh, we never did shout outs, but. Oh, uh, you can do those real quick. Don will yeah. do shout outs quick if you want to shout out. Just so keep we got chatting. Naysay, Casey Jones, Chris is here, Digger Dog, Ghost Magnet, Justin Good Earth, Maggie M10, Mere Nuisance. Portal Mom's always here. Thank you, Mom. Rachel gets it right. Ruger Ridge. Uh, Ruthie Castro's here. Suspicious Silence. Fourth Color and Wonder Woman. Uh, special thanks to Wes for popping in. And very special thanks to Maggie and Carrie. And who was the other one that threw up some uh, a super chat? I don't remember. Who was the other one? I don't um, remember. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't was remember. Was it Android? No, I don't remember. Oh. Whoever it was, we love you all. Yeah, thank you guys so much for helping to support the show. And uh, we'll look for you tomorrow night. Uh, I'll be here, hopefully, to keep you entertained. So good night, everybody. We love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. Good night, everybody. Good night. Cue the credits. <laughs>